Hey, what's up? We're back with a new episode of Movie News, and we have a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. Starting off with Disney announcing um, to shareholders that they're going to start prioritizing Disney+. Plus. Now, we first saw this, that Seoul was moved to Disney+. Plus. Um, we saw Mulan move there, even though it was for an extra cost. Um, but Nick, what do you think this is going to look like in the future with, for Disney maybe adding more content to the platform? I mean, well, one, I feel like, you know, as a personal streaming service like Netflix, they're always going to start branching out into like producing Disney Plus only content. And I mean, this ties in a lot to what we were saying. We've been saying the last few movie news segments about theaters, like closing down, like what does the future of like movie watching look like? And the fact that they're prioritizing this, I mean, as much as like this could be read as like a bad premonition, like, I mean, they're like, they're doing what they, what they need to do to like, you know, keep their, keep their movie end going. So, I mean, um, not unexpected if, but also like, you know, it, it is how it sounds like it is. They're preparing for like a doomsday scenario where, you know, theaters as they're already happening now, theaters are going to be significantly, they're going to be significantly less of them. So, um, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, good or bad, it's just the situation we're in. Yeah, I have some similar thoughts. I think there are two aspects to it. One of the things that was really appealing to me was how t- how cheap Disney Plus was. Yeah, It's $7 a month. It's, I think, $60 a year if you just pay it one lump sum, um, which is a really sweet deal mm-hmm. uh, for all the content they give you. But the problem I've been noticing is that I watched The Mandalorian and I'm a Star Wars, The Clone Wars, the animated show fan. So I watch that. And then it's really just if I feel like watching a Marvel movie, a Star Wars movie, um, an animated Disney animated movie that I've probably already seen. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I have been craving like more new content, which hopefully with the Star Wars shows and the Marvel shows. Yeah. On a vision come out this year. It, it should start to pick up and I, it needs to get to the point where there's something once a month that starts up that I want to watch. Like I, I, I need to be able to have the Mandalorian end and then WandaVision starts and then Falcon and the Winter Soldier starts and then something else starts that I want to watch. That's kind of where Marvel and not Marvel Disney needs to get to. Um, I think to improve the streaming service and kind of keep viewers on it. Now there's been a rumor that a top shareholder wants black widow to go to disney plus um which i think is kind of crazy just because the amount of money you're losing by not putting it out in theaters for sure but i I do understand it from the perspective of you might get a ton of new subscribers that want to watch um black widow again it's like a matter of like survival (laughs) just like trying to ensure that the products are like are getting out and not just sitting waiting around for like an uncertain future so i mean it's just all about survival at this point and just getting the stuff out. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And there are still movies coming out, or at least trailers for movies coming out. We got the trailer for The 355, I believe, um, featuring Jessica Chastain and Lupita Nyong'o. Um, what were your thoughts on the trailer, and um, how has your excitement level been moved up or down for this movie? I heard this movie was coming out a while ago but i'll be honest and like i'll say like it like just slipped my memory and so when the trailer came out i was like oh yeah like you know that's a thing um i mean i love jessica chastain she's like one of my favorite actresses lupita nyong'o is like incredibly talented so i mean that alone should be um an easy sell i think what's kind of like not bothering me but just like would prevent me from being like i have to see this like opening day or like you know as soon as it's released is that like One, the director, the director is Simon Kimberg, who made his directorial debut in 2019 with uh, Dark Phoenix. And that was an awful movie. And that was definitely not a very good directing performance. Um, And so when, I mean, granted it is his second film and like, you know, not every director, their first film is like an instant success. So I mean, who knows, like maybe like he'll find his, hit his stride here, but you know, if your directing resume is just Dark Phoenix, it's kind of hard to like be at least like be super enthusiastic without being like very cautious at the same time. And also the whole like, you know, just uh, from the, what the plot looks like, like the classic, you know, spies and like, you know, we have to go get this thing and prevent like 
the end of the world or whatnot. We've seen it done before. We've it could definitely be good, but it's also like you know doesn't seem to be anything great like crazy new. Although I mean like it looks very entertaining and like what Sebastian Stan is in there right amongst other people. Yeah, I mean the cast. Excuse me, the cast will definitely be entertaining. I mean, if it comes out in theaters, then like I'll I won't well, I wouldn't mind checking it out to help you know support Jessica Chastain. But um, I don't know. It's just my my excitement is just kind of like in the middle. Cool cast. I mean, probably an entertaining time, but also just looks a little you know the usual. And the director is not the best, at least when I last saw him. Yeah, I think it's tough to have your first movie as a director be a big action CG heavy film because. The 355 will be a big action heavy film, but I don't think it'll be as CG reliant and necessarily as complicated for directing as a Dark Phoenix movie would be. Uh, so I think he is at an advantage there. I think that's just like a really tough movie to start with. Um, but I wasn't that excited when the trailer came out. Before the trailer, and I had read about it, I was like, Jessica Chastain and Lupita Nyong'o in a movie. I'm like, I'm, I'm sold. And now I'm kind of more hesitant. I'm kind of in the, I'm going to wait to see how the reviews are before I go uh, check out this film. But it gives I, me I, Charlie's, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, gave me kind of like Charlie's Angels vibes. Like when they did that reboot, like mm-hmm. last year with like Kristen Stewart and Naomi Scott. And I was kind of like, okay, well, you two came out a year within each other and, you know, the similar, there's certain, uh, beyond the fact that, you know, it's like core female spy group, like just the, the plotting of the story is kind of like, okay, like I could see how this could go. So um, yeah, you, you keep going my bad. No, it's all good, but we're going to move on to the trailer for Soul um, that came out. It's the second trailer, I believe, for the film, which has moved to Disney Plus and it will be coming out around um, Christmas se- season, December. Uh, what were your initial thoughts on this second trailer? Well, I remember, I think it was our last movie news or maybe two segments ago when um, we said you said that Soul has gotten like 100% of Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, there's been like, I feel like this film has like both kind of been under the radar, but also like because of such like good reviews, it's like, it's like people are starting to take notice. Um, I thought the trailer was definitely like, I thought it was definitely interesting. I mean, Disney and Pixar, like, when have they ever, like, truly let us down? Right. I mean, that and for, at least for me, like, the synopsis alone, I was like, this is very, this is very interesting. This is definitely, like, again, just Disney and Pixar finding new angles to, to do things. And um, I thought it was a very, I thought it was entertaining. Um, I mean, I have Disney Plus, so I'll probably check it out at some point during winter break. But uh, that's, that's about it. I saw the first trailer, and I was kind of like, don't really need to see any more. Like it was a pretty good first trailer for me. So the second one was just like and a little extra on top. Yeah, I mean, each trailer, I just get more and more excited, especially with the reviews. I remember before Onward came out in January or February, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I remember people were saying that people within Disney thought that, and Pixar thought that Soul was going to be like the big award-winning movie, not Onward. And it seemed like that's the case um, Mm -hmm. because everyone who's seen the movie is like, it's spectacular. It's a, it's one of the best animated films they've seen. Like the the reviews are just insane. So I'm really excited to see, I think the trailer was really good. Um, Jamie Foxx, I believe is providing the leading voice. uh, And I'm excited for that. I've always liked him as an actor. So I'm excited to see him as a voice actor in this role. Uh, And it looks to be pretty cool. Uh, continuing on, though, we have Ridley Scott teaming up with Joaquin Phoenix uh, for a Napoleon movie. Now, what are your thoughts on this? Um, well, talk about a, a hell of a duo. Like, that's going to be backing this film. Like, you know, um, Ridley Scott, Blade Runner, uh, Black Hawk Down, um, Gladiator. I mean, he can definitely do like a big, you know, he's a large scale and but also like kind of artsier vibe movies like you know we've like like gladiator and like blade runner and um i'm i mean for me the big sell was joaquin phoenix i mean he had a hell of a year in 2019 with joker and um i've become such a huge fan of him since then i've done like deep dive into his work and he's one of my favorite actors so like anything that would have been like joaquin phoenix's next movie is you know 
felt like you know so and so i'd have been like i'm definitely showing up there just for him um the subject of a napoleon movie um i'm like kind of indifferent to just because like he's not a he's not a person in history i've like researched extensively so i'm kind of like okay like you know it's it's napoleon like you know little short guy con- conquered and was um a bit of a dick but you know it's like um i think joaquin will do fine like joaquin's like joaquin will do fine ridley scott will probably do fine um i don't know if they've announced like screenwriters or whatever but i mean i think just pairing the two or just having joaquin in general will definitely elevate the movie so i'm definitely gonna check that out whenever it comes out yeah i'm i'm pretty excited about it because if you guys remember what was it oh my gosh i'm blanking on the movie gladiator yeah with joaquin awesome. phoenix as caesar yeah mm-hmm. that's kind of what i in pic- picture joaquin phoenix being kind of not exactly the same but similar mm-hmm. in a role as napoleon napoleon was known as i'm trying to do this without swearing because youtube um but a jerk and just a really terrible person um mm-hmm at least from what I remember from like sixth grade history or whatever. Uh, and I think Joaquin Phoenix can play that kind of despicable person really well. Right. And Ridley Scott is just one of those filmmakers that if he makes a movie, you kind of just need to go out and watch it. Um, he's one of those filmmakers for me. So I will definitely be there in theaters to watch it. And I'm excited to hear more news about what the film exactly is about. Like what part of Napoleon's life is it focused on? Is he even the center of the story or is it kind of a more of a focus on who is around Napoleon at the time or a certain era of his rule. Right. Right. Um, but moving on, we have Furiosa, um, which is part of the mad. She's one of the Mad Max characters um, is having her own prequel movie. And it has been rumored slash announced uh, some of the cast Anya Taylor joy, uh, who had been rumored for a few months now that she had been cast in the role. Mm-hmm. And then you have Chris Hemsworth and uh, Yaya Abdul-Mateen, uh, who have all been rumored to or been confirmed. It's kind of confusing with how different outlets are reporting it uh, to be in this new Furiosa movie. Now, I'm pretty pumped because it's uh, George Miller who made Mad Max Fury Roads, which was one of the most epic movies I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. just on an action level and even on a character level it's i think it's pretty great considering like what the movie is um, but what were your thoughts on these casting announcements well it was just one um i often with for me like every casting announcement for any movie there's always at least like one person that i just don't recognize and like it it bothers me just because i'm like ah uh, like you know like i know this name i know this name and i'm like you're the lone one but then here, like, just to see this this trio, I was like, that's awesome. That's, like, a really cool combination of people. Um, if you've been following with, with us for a while, we, but we, you know that we both love uh, Yaya. We both think he's, like, a great up-and-coming talent. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy is another um, great up-and-coming actress. Uh, she was in Split and Glass from M. Night Shyamalan and... Um, she was just in the New Mutants um, from Josh Boone, and you know you have Thor there. You have Chris Hemsworth, who seems to be picking up a lot of roles left and right now. Ever since I guess you know the Infinity Saga like kind of concluded, um, it's just a really cool combination of people. I think even if it wasn't a Mad Max spinoff, I was still like tuned in just to like support like these people, just because it is such a fascinating combination and under Miller's direction like these three can go like wild like all they want in terms of like characters and acting like Anya is obviously probably playing Furiosa but to see like what Chris Hemsworth and Yaya could possibly do given like what um the side characters were like in Fury Road there's so much there's like so much opportunity for them to just go like all out for you know whichever way their characters go so definitely a very like awesome cast definitely cool combination of people Yeah, I agree. And one of the things is, I really hope that Chris Hemsworth is playing a villain. Mm -hmm. Um, If you've seen him in Good Times at the El Royale. Bad Times, Bad Times. Or Bad (laughs) Times at the El Royale. Sorry, I'm thinking, I'm mixing it with Good Time. Um, Mm -hmm. He is so good as a villain there. It's, It's not the most massive part, but 
I think he eats up like every bit of screen time. And I'm really curious to see him as like an all out action villain in a movie that's like Bad Times at the El Royale is a little bit of a, it's a different type of movie, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm really curious to see, I want to see him as a villain. I don't have no idea about that, but if he is playing a villain or not, I'm really excited for Yaya. I mean, I'm going to save you guys the time because we could go on for a long time about Yaya and maybe we'll be doing a spotlight in the future about him because he is a young star in the making. Um, But we're going to move on to our final topic, which is John David Washington replaces Michael B. Jordan in uh, the David O. Russell movie that's coming out. Now, what are your thoughts on this news? Well, one kind of like the, uh, the three, five, five, um, what I said about that, like how, I knew like this project was happening, but then like slipped my mind. And then once I saw like people reporting that John David had replaced Michael B. Jordan, I looked into it. And this project is another one with a pretty stacked group behind it. You have David O. Russell of um, The Fighter, American Hustle, two um, really great and really underrated movies, I think from the past decade. And then you have Christian Bale, who O. Russell's worked with before and who just in general is like one of the greatest actors working today. Um, you have Margot Robbie, who's another great, uh, wonderful, upcoming, up and coming talent. She's she's another one grabbing roles left and right. And then you just add John David coming off hot coming off of Tenet. And um, again, I just think it's a really cool trio. I think Michael B. Jordan definitely be would have been um, definitely would have spiced things up. Maybe just more so because he's been around longer. Um, John David's career is still like starting. But um, I mean, it's a. I have we have no idea what the movie's called. We have no synopsis. We have nothing about the movie. But just on this cast again, like I'm gonna go see it. I love everyone there, and uh, I don't know. We'll see. I I I'm I'm curious. I've I've been like I'm curious to see where, where John David's career goes. Just going from like Spike Lee's a Spike Lee film in Black Klansman to a big Christopher Nolan action film in Tenet. So it's definitely. I'm definitely intrigued to see what he does. And um, it's a bit unfortunate that Michael B couldn't be in the film, but again, it is what it is. Yeah, I think it's a bummer that he can't be in the film. I have a feeling it's probably based on scheduling. Right. I know there's a new, there's a third Creed movie they're working on. Uh, I don't know if they have a, I haven't heard about anything from it, but I know it's being worked on, but I don't know when it's going to start filming everything being pushed back because the pandemic could have made it so that Michael B. Jordan couldn't make this film. So they put in John David Washington. Um, It could also be, I think he's going with Ryan Coogler again to make another movie, The Wrong Answer, which it's interesting. I've been reading about that movie that Ryan Coogler was going to do for years, The Wrong Answer, but I don't know. It's something took a little while for it to get off the ground. So it could be that as well. Uh, But I'm excited that, John David Washington is just in another movie because I think he's been great in both Tenet and uh, Black Klansman. Also, he's in Ballers, which is supposed to be a very good series with The Rock. Um, But overall, that's kind of what's going on in the world of uh, movies this week. Uh, If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below on what you thought about this new news. And uh, we'll see you next time. Peace out.